be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of mana, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. 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 Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin before God and one another in a moment of silence. God, our provider, help us. It is hard, it is for, hard us for us to believe there, there is enough, is enough to, to share. We question, we question your ways, ways when they, when they differ, differ from, from the, the ways of the world, of the world in we which we live. We each turn to our, our own understanding, understanding rather, rather than, than trusting, trusting in you. We rebel against your teachings and your ways. And your ways. Where shall we, Where shall we, shall we turn? turn? Turn us again, again to you. Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, we are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there's always more than enough so we can share. Through Jesus, the bread of life, we are shown God's mercy. We are forgiven by God's grace. We are loved abundantly. Amen. 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 May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also and also, also with you. you. God of great missions. We gather this day and we come as we are, each of us at a different place in our faith journey. Meet us, Meet us where, us we, where are, we are. Where we are. And give and us, give us language a language to proclaim, to proclaim your, your, gospel. your gospel. Lead us Lead forward, us forward, to forward to the great, great mission, mission you have, you have for, for us. us. Amen. 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 The first reading is from Romans 8. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Word of God. Word of, Word of life. Word of life. The Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 3. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do the signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you know where it comes, do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. 
Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts help us to trust you more, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. It's not long ago that the church to which I'm a member was in the same position as you. Our pastor had left and we had an interim pastor to help us through the process to get a new one. A time with many challenges, but also many opportunities. And all this for you, just as we're coming out of the isolation of a pandemic. That's been a challenge, but also an opportunity too. We've been challenged to learn about Zoom. But that has also made it possible for me to be with you in Weathersfield, Connecticut, while I'm three hours drive away in Falmouth, Maine. This Memorial Day weekend may be different from last year and more like previous ones with remembering those who've given their lives for the sake of our country by celebrating with at least sometimes without a mask and fear of infection. Memorial Day can be a time to reminisce and think about a lot of different people, people who gave us the gift of memories, people who often said or did things that benefited our lives, people for whom we are thankful, people we love, and people who have loved us. On Memorial Day, We remember these significant relationships. We can picture these people in our minds and remember them and what they did. It's not so easy for us to picture God. And so sometimes it's not as easy to relate to God. We all have images of God, something that we picture in our mind when we say the word God. Our image can grow as our experience grows, but sometimes our image does not quite match what we're experiencing. This happens often when we ask, how can God let bad things happen to good people? If people have been good and obeyed God's laws, they should be rewarded. If God is all powerful, what is God doing? We want to know God and better understand what's going on. God has been a mystery to us from way back. Imagine, though, having a chance to ask questions of someone known as a teacher who's come from God and who could do signs that can't be done apart from God. Nicodemus realized that he had just such an opportunity. Yet, he didn't want to get in trouble with other Jews if he was seen meeting with Jesus. So he went in the middle of the night. As a Jew, 
Nicodemus believed in one God, unlike the Greeks and Romans who believed in many gods. He sought to understand his God better. As a Pharisee, he was well aware of the Ten Commandments and other laws and felt it was most important to obey them in order to have a relationship with God. He was aware that the Greeks and Romans had a lot of goddesses, so he used masculine terms to speak of his God. And then Jesus hits him, not with laws, but with his relationship with God. Jesus even used a feminine image of God as one who gives birth. Jesus pointed out that God wants to be as close to us as a mother is to her baby. Nicodemus could not understand this image of God. Being practical had always worked for him, so he tried to picture someone physically going through the birth process a second time. Only now they were full grown and too big. He was looking for answers he could envision, ones he could see, hear, and touch, and did not understand what Jesus was talking about. So Jesus explained some more. He knew Nicodemus wanted to be on God's side and be a member of God's kingdom. And he was aware that Nicodemus knew and tried to obey all the laws. But Nicodemus could not understand that God wants a relationship with us, not dependent on obedience to laws, but on our relationship. Jesus pointed out an example of something that Nicodemus knew, but something he couldn't see, the wind. Jesus explained that God's spirit is like the wind, blowing where it chooses, not something we can control. We do not know where it comes from or where it goes. Jesus then further explained another way. Beside the spirit through which God reached out to humanity to help us understand heavenly things, God reached out to us through something earthly, through the Son of Man, through Jesus. Only because of God's great desire for relationship with us, divinity came to us in human form, in the form of an only Son, Jesus, so that we might get to know, trust, and believe in God. It's never been God's purpose to condemn the world, but to bring everyone into an everlasting relationship. For people who, like Nicodemus, have trouble expanding their understanding of God, Jesus gives hope. When we have difficulty, we can look to today's gospel reading for an example and see how patient Jesus was with Nicodemus. So then know how God is with us, patient, understanding, and wanting to help us grow. God hopes for us to know that our God is not one who sits in judgment, loving us only when we obey, but as one who wants to relate to us as closely as a parent of a newborn. We are being asked to be as trusting as an infant, not limiting ourselves to only our own experience, but understanding and seeing ourselves nourished by the whole Trinity, by God, our creator and parent, by Jesus, our redeemer and model, and by the Holy Spirit, whose constant presence brings us to faith, and helps us to grow and reach out. So what difference does this Trinity make in our lives, we might ask? Those who know God as the creator 
often admire God in creation and see God there. But some who know God only that way may feel that God created everything and then sits up above watching us, seeing everything we do and judging us and giving us punishment when we do wrong. The God and creator of the universe could have chosen to be like that, but has instead chosen to be close to us. Through Jesus and the Lord's Prayer, we are taught to call God a term they'd never used before, Father. In fact, the term that Jesus used, Abba, means something even closer than Father. It means Daddy or Papa. His audience must have been surprised that he used such a personal name. Through Jesus, we came to know a God who desires to be close to us. We see that we are cared about so much, God came to us in human form, in Jesus, to show us this love, God's grace, unconditional love and mercy. God is there always reaching out to us first. We saw that God incarnate Jesus was willing to even die for us. But God didn't leave us there, but exhibited the power and desire to bring death to life and wants to be together with us eternally. At Pentecost, God made us aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit, showing us God's presence with us bringing us to faith and strengthening us to continue Jesus's work on earth, to continue expanding God's kingdom here. God showed us that our relationship is not passive. We've been empowered through the Holy Spirit to be co-creators, bringing God's peace, justice, equality, love, and care for all of creation. Jesus showed us how. God gives us the freedom to choose to work with God or not. If we say yes, we're given the honor of being co-creators. We are given the opportunity to help God's kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven as we pray in the Lord's Prayer. What a privilege and opportunity we've been given. With so many also wondering about God as Nicodemus did, may we strengthen our own faith and reach out to others in their faith journey, both inside and outside the church. Reassured that our God is reaching out to us continually giving to us in creation, redeeming us and teaching us through Jesus, and guiding us and strengthening us through the Holy Spirit. In these difficult times, with the additional challenge for your church of going through the process of defining your mutual goals and desires, and then calling a new pastor, May you be strengthened by the love and care of the whole Trinity, which has promised to be with the church throughout history. And this weekend, may the Trinity help us to remember all those who sacrificed for us as we anticipate new challenges and opportunities with those we know and those we don't yet know. And may the peace of God, which has passed all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.
And now may we confess our faith with those throughout generations and throughout the world with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, maker, maker of, of heaven and earth, of all, of all that is seen, seen and unseen. And unseen. We believe in one believe in Lord, Lord Jesus, Christ, Jesus Christ, the only, the only Son, Son of God, of God eternally, eternally begotten God, of the Father, God from God, from God, God light, light from light, light. True, God true God from true God, God. begotten, begotten made, not made, made of one of being, one being with, with the Father. Through him, Through him all, things all things were made. made. For us, for us and, and, and for our salvation, he came, he came down, down from heaven, heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, the Son who with the Father and the Son is worship, worship and glorified, and glorified, who has spoken, spoken through the prophets. The prophets. We, we believe in one, in one holy, holy Catholic and apostolic, and apostolic church. church. We acknowledge one, one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, of the dead and the and life of the world to come. come. Amen. Amen. Prayers of Intercession. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. We pray, O oh God, for your holy church around the world. Revitalize and renew us that we may be reborn once again through the waters of baptism and the blowing wind of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give you thanks for your power revealed to us in creation, for cedar and oak trees, for rushing waters, for the echoes of thunder, for creatures great and small. Inspire us to care for creation as you hoped we would. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for all nations and leaders that, led by your spirit, they will work for a world where all your children enjoy peace. We pray for nations that are currently experiencing war or turmoil, especially for that in the Holy Land. We ask that you help us to work together to find a way to end the polarization in our own country. Heal our divisions. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Hear we pray for all those who suffer, especially victims and survivors of trauma or violence. Give respite to those living with PTSD or other mental health concerns. Comfort those who have lost loved ones due to the coronavirus and other terminal diseases. Give strength and healing to those who are sick, body, mind, or spirit. We lift up those close to the hearts of our St. Paul's family. Alan, Alex, Andrew, Annie, Ashlyn, Bob, Brian, Ed, Eunice, Phil, Gloria, Jerry, Joan, Ken, Kim, Kimberly, Larry, Lori, Leslie, Lillian, Louise, Lydia, Martha, Mary, 
Monica, Richard, Rosa, Roy and Gail, Sharon, Stephanie, Trent. Pastor Morris, would you like to add a name? Yes, I, I would like to add for the family of Harlan McLandry, McGandry, uh, in there. That they, may, they might receive your comfort, your comfort and care in their loss. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, hear our prayer. We pray for our St. Paul's worshiping community that the splendor of your majesty and the holiness of your mystery may be glorified through our worship, our service, and our relationships with one another. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O oh God, for those who have died in faith, especially those who have been models of faithful living for us. And we look to the day that we will be reunited with all those we have loved and lost. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And, and also with you. With you. And at our church, we have put our hands up like this, and it looks like we're touching. And some even have gone like that to touch the ones above and below. Thought you'd like that. Let us pray. Holy God, through your Holy Spirit, we are blessed with resurrection and renewal. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer in thanksgiving. We offer yeah, our, our gifts, gifts to, you. to you, praying, praying that, that you will use, use them, them to bring, to bring new, life new life and hope and to, hope our, mission. to our mission as, as your, people your people in this, place, in this, in this place, time and place. Time. Amen. 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 Now praying the words that Jesus taught mm -hmm. us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be done, be done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses. trespasses. As, as we, we forgive, forgive those, those who trespass, trespass against, against, us. against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. For, for thine, thine is the kingdom, the kingdom and the power and the glory, and the glory forever, forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. 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 We honor all who have sacrificed their lives for peace and justice. Let us pray. Eternal God, we bless you for the great cloud of witnesses, those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor. We thank you for those who have served our country, especially those whom we remember and honor today, who gave their lives for the freedom of others. We lift up the names of those military women and men who are especially close to our hearts. As we remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice of their life for our freedom and for the freedom of those around the world, we pray for peace in our time. Help us to remember that all people and nations are your beloved children and you want freedom and justice for us all. Fill us with compassion and inspire us to work for peace. We pray also for the families who've sacrificed so much to support their beloved service, men or women, their spouse, their child, their parent, 
and who now mourn the loss of what could have been the future they expected to share. Bless them with the peace that only you can give and the strength to meet the days ahead. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. God has poured the Holy Spirit into our hearts, strengthened for the journey we go forward in hope. Witnessing to God's love, serving, serving in, God's in God's name. God's name. Go in peace, in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And now announcements. Yes. Thank you, Pastor, for a great message this morning. Um, I only have a few announcements. The first one a sad announcement. Uh, I found out last night that Jan Pergandy's brother Harlan passed away. So please keep Jan and her family in your prayers. Um, from what I, Judy indicated, it's possible that the his obituary is in today's paper. Um, I haven't had a chance to check online to see if it is or not, but it should be appearing soon if it's not in today's. Uh, as far as the coming week, the communications team will be meeting at seven o'clock on Wednesday, the 2nd of June. And um, next Sunday, we will be having our Zoom worship at 930. But in addition, we, weather permitting, will be meeting outdoors in the parking lot for in-person worship. Bishop Hazelwood is planning on attending that outdoor worship. He will be preaching and then he has some things to share with us after the service and he will be available for some question and answer time. Um, we will be monitoring the weather. So watch your emails if it's questionable. Um, then we'll send out an email on Saturday evening to let you know if there's a change in that. Otherwise, um, you know, if, 
if the weather is not agreeable for outdoor worship, we will have the Zoom worship at 9.30 and Bishop Hazelwood will join us for that and will be available for the questions and answers. Unfortunately, he won't be able to do both because he needs to, if we're going to be doing outdoor worship, he needs to spend his time from 9.30 to 10.30 driving to get to, Hart, to Weathersfield.